the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, for coming here. This is a very big honor to be here and to speak about Luciana Bilbecher in this place in particular. This is a semester that has holomorphic dynamics as its component, and uh, Bilbecher made fundamental contributions to the area. And uh, well, he was also connected to Warsaw, something that not everybody knows. He was born here. He got his education up to early university level uh, in here. So uh, this is a very fitting uh, occasion and a great responsibility for me not to mess up anything and try to tell you what it is all about. Uh, well, many of you who are here are in holomorphic dynamics, but there are people who are not, people from topological dynamics or perhaps different background. So I'll tell you a few words about uh, those. Uh, pretty much everyone knows Becker theorem and the better telling maps, as, which were recognized as early contributions to the area, but turns out that's not all. There'll be much more mathematics, if you can say it. Well, I'll intertwine Betcher's mathematics with his life and work and academic struggles. So I'll tell you some details about academic life in different parts of Poland and also in Germany. So you'll see some interesting details. And then my main point would be to argue, to try to promote the viewpoint that Better is really one of the founders of holomorphic dynamics 20 years before Julia and Fatou. Turns out he had lots of ideas that now form the fundamental notions of the discipline. Well, the problem is he was very non-rigorous and sometimes his good intuitions were, uh, let's say, accompanied by plainly false claims. And proofs are almost absent. So that led to his academic struggles that I uh, listed here. And that makes it very difficult for the reader who tries to investigate uh, his scientific output because well, I'll give you a sample how it how it is, but let me go on. Not yet, no. Montel theorem was also about 1918, so that was a paradigm change. If you can speak about paradigms in mathematics, this is the instance. Philosophers have this whole conception, but uh, holomorphic dynamics before Montel theorem and after Montel theorem are totally different. So I'll say a few words about Montel, but at, towards the end of the talk, thank you for bringing this up. Well, for those uh, who need a reminder, what people do in holomorphic dynamics, uh, they study iterations of holomorphic maps on the Riemann sphere or complex affine plane, not only, but roughly speaking. So everybody knows that a systematic discipline was developed by Pierre Fatou and Gaston Julia around 1918. There are books describing the beginnings, the French Academy contest, and such that led to uh, those developments. And uh, everybody has seen Julia sets, uh, even people who don't have anything to do with mathematics. Well, the definition is just in case. If you consider a rational map as a uh, holomorphic map of the Riemann sphere, putting infinity as a value at poles to make it interesting, make it greater or equal than two. The fact to say is the maximal open subset of the sphere on which all the family of iterates, it's normal. The notion that Felix uh, mentioned here that also came uh, about, I think 1911 was Montel's thesis, but I didn't check this out. This was the last moment that I had this idea. Do you have time already? But uh, Becher didn't have it for sure. The Julia set is the complement of the Fatou set. And here is your reminder what normal family is. 
if you want to think about locally, we continue as the same thing. All right. So for a polynomial map, Julia set is the boundary of the set of points in C whose orbit under uh, the polynomial bounded. Well, because it's about holomorphic dynamic, there have to be pictures. Uh, but, uh, well, you know, it's an example of the Julia set, the boundary of this blue thing. I then wrote you the quadratic for it is. Here I did write the map, but I was also a polynomial Julia said, the boundary of the red thing. But what I want you to look at is these green regions instead. Here you have these shades of green, and here. So these uh, are the level, uh, actually, sub level sets of the modulus of better coordinate, no less. Uh, here. So the existence of such a coordinate, I'll tell you what's that if you need your refresher on better theorem. Uh, so the theorem, well, I put two dates because it was considered by better in two papers of his, one in Polish in 1898. I'll speak about the bibliography later on a little bit. And the other one is the one that everybody uh, cites, 1904 in Russia, in the, the Bulletin of Kazakh Mathematical Society. I'll comment on that later on as well. Uh, so uh, even though the appearance was in 1898, the theorem or the statement appeared without proof. So the sketches of proofs in two ways, are only from 1904. So if though the statement is earlier, the sort of proofs are later. So when everybody cites 1904 Russian paper, that's that's probably what they should be doing. Okay, so we have an analytic function in the neighborhood of zero uh, without the linear term. Uh, then there exists, uh, for such a function, there exists a conformal map of the neighborhood of zero to the unit disk, analytic, with such uh, expansion, satisfying the equation big F composed with little f is the uh, f uh, raised to the power m, where m is the first non zero derivative, the, the order of the first non zero derivative. So if you wish, if you are the dynamist, you say this uh, function big F gives you the semi-conjugacy between your little f that you started with and the power function, z to the power m. So that's a better coordinate. And the equation that describes this, I'm already with the next slide, but motivation case from studying functional equations. So first there was an equation and then there was a theorem because he was trying to find all functions satisfying this equation. A big F is the unknown. Well, I already said that this actually describes uh, the dynamics of an analytic function is near its super attractive fixed point. Well, we don't have linear term, starts somewhere higher in the power series, so the point is fixed and super attractive. Uh, so I already told you about the conjugacy. <laughs> so for a polynomial map, this is the situation at infinity. Uh, so the uh, neighborhood in which better theorem holds is a neighborhood of infinity. And the should is it is a boundary of the set where you have better coordinate greater than one. Well, uh, as I said, better didn't uh, state, uh, did state his theorem in 1898 without proof. Uh, he gave two sketches of proof in his 1904 Russian paper, but the mathematician who filled in the details first time around was Joseph Fels Rich. 
Amerikalı matematician uh, who needed that in his own research on iteration. He knew Russian, it turns out, and uh, the New York Mathematical Society, the sort of predecessor of American Mathematical Society, had an exchange of publications with Kazan Mathematical Society. So I guess uh, the unity of Kazan was around, and that's how it got uh, hold of the theorem. Uh, anyhow, so you can see the proof for yourself. Uh, well, uh, we can assume that the coefficient uh, here is uh, uh, by the first non-vanishing uh, term is equal to one. Oh, but uh, uh, so uh, let's consider. Well, the point zero is super attractive. So let's consider a neighborhood in which the iterates approach zero uniformly as p increases. Uh, uh, and such that f itself has no other zero than zero. So uh, basically what he does, what Reed does, and what Bert here was uh, proposing to do, take the branches of uh, suitable roots, one over m to the power uh, well, one over m, one over m squared, one over m to the power p. This is uniformly bounded. Here we write this. Well, we are not quite there yet with the equation. We have this error term here, but this error term tends to zero as p increases, and the convergence is uniformly with respect to z and uh, the. Uh, Number Q is fixed. If F is in this is more iterations. Yeah, yes, that's Reed's notation. I, I should have said I, I just copied is, uh, 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 yeah, pretty much so. But the first one was read, and it's already in version 1904 paper. If you are interested how he did it, that's how he did. Well, not quite. What he considered, and what he also introduced, it's we did what Sarah goes to infinity m to the power n root f n of z minus z. So that was in the 1918, uh, uh, sorry, 1898 paper. Uh, let's see. Well, there was no, let's say, consideration of convergence as such. He just said, let's take this limit and let's uh, write down the solution in terms of this limit, but whether the limit exists, whether it's uniform, nothing of this sort. Which branch of root? Yes, 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 yes. Nothing of this sort appears. So uh, this was one thing. This reappeared in 1904 paper, but there is another way of solving uh, Butler's equation. He considers something more uh, general, Gravis equation. I'm not going to write it down because I'm not sure if I got the right one when I check the details. Uh, but uh, uh, the solution to Gravis, Gravis equation are uh, represented as path integrals, and from those solutions he, con uh, he constructs solutions to his equation. So there are two ways of doing that in 1904 paper. It's pretty thick. Anyhow, this is a well-known thing. Another well-known thing uh, by Becher, it's an example of everywhere chaotic rational map. The Julia set of such a map is the whole sphere. That's why they are called chaotic. And uh, well, Becker was not the first one. Uh, Ernest Schroeder was before him. Uh, Becker used uh, 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 Jacobi elliptic functions. Well, why elliptic functions? Again, you have to write down thing like that, which is kind of addition law for elliptic curves. I mean, there is a theorem by Weierstrass which functions uh, can 
satisfy the addition law, you have rational functions, you have rational functions of exponentials, or you have elliptic functions, three classes of functions, if I remember correctly. Anyhow, uh, the most popular uh, construction is with Weierstrass P function, but what Petra used was Jacobi elliptic function. Sine and cosine. Cosine was in his PhD thesis, sine was in the uh, 1898 Polish paper. So he knew elliptic function is quite well because when he was a student in Warsaw, well, that was a Russian language university back then. I'll tell you in a second about convoluted Polish history, but the language of instruction was Russian. The professors were Russian. Uh, with few exceptions. Uh, one of the professors of mathematics was Nikolai Yakovlevich Sonin, who is well known for his work in special functions. There are Sonin formulas here and there for special functions, whatnot. Very, very complicated. If one formula takes one page or something, but definitely I can think that, uh, well, Berthold took, uh, took courses from Sonin, and I'm sure he learned his special functions from him. What, what names? Sonin. Nikolai uh, Yakovlevich Sonin. Uh, I don't know if everybody can read Cyrillic, so I'll write him in the transcription. Uh, some, uh -huh. Sometimes he published in French, so he got a little e at the end. So if you see Sonin formula, that's the guy. All right. What's your definition of chaotic? I mean, uh, chaotic is, uh, well, pretty much like what you have in Axiom A, there is a dense orbit. And that's his <laughs> argument. That's that's his argument, actually. He said, well, it it has to be chaotic because if, if any of the orbits was pointwise convergence anywhere, the limit would be would have to be the value of elliptic sine of infinity. And this is not well-defined quantity. So that's his argument in a nutshell. Uh, of, of course, there should be a little bit more rigor in that, but that's that's what he says. And the orbits are divergent everywhere. Okay, so that's the construction that everybody knows with Weierstrass function. I'll skip this because the specialists know it, and those specialists maybe are not so much interested. Uh, well. And now, what I wanted to tell you, what's more interesting, because this is what you can read in any decent book on the holomorphic dynamics. Anything has better theorem, better coordinate, better potential, uh, whatever you call it. Uh, Milo books has recognition of better uh, chaotic maps, but uh, until we started digging with Stanislav Domoratsky, I should credit uh, the co-author of the work that uh, was done. But I have acknowledgments at the end because my beautiful template provided by my beautiful employer doesn't, uh, doesn't think the uh, co-authors need any recognition. I was fighting the computer program trying to put the second author to no avail. Anyhow. Uh, there is much more than just those things that uh, everybody knows. Now, if you are unfamiliar with history of Poland, a little bit of history lessons, Poland stopped existing as a country in, after 1795. It was partitioned among three neighboring superpowers, Russian Empire, Austrian Empire, and the Kingdom of Prussia. Well, I should have made a correction. So we will be very concerned by those cities, Warsaw, where we are now. 
Leberg, which during Dutcher time was called Lvov. And this is the Polish name. And in Ukrainian is Lviv. You are familiar with that name? Uh, well, there is no Wobja, but there is Ostrowenka, which is very close. This whole city will also make an appearance. Well, this map should have been well, this map should have been different because in 1815, after Napoleonic Wars, uh, some of these territories changed uh, hands. In particular, Warsaw, which is colored blue, which means it was taken initially by the Prussian Kingdom, found itself within the Polish Kingdom, which became part of Russian Empire. But I couldn't find the map that I could legally download, so sorry about something that might confuse you if you are not familiar with Polish history. So this should be, if I had a slightly later map, this region should be colored in some sort of pink here. Okay, this is important. I already mentioned that the university was uh, Russian and uh, the language of instruction was Russian. So here is uh, uh, the beginning of but her curriculum vita. Well, he was born in Warsaw. His family was Lutheran. They were quite prominent in Warsaw. They made, uh, well, uh, I'm talking about evangelicals. Uh, they made very many contributions to Polish culture and such. Better attended private real schools in Warsaw. Now, it's not real as opposed to fake. It's real in terms of uh, curriculum. It's who's born January 7th or uh, Julian versus Gregorian calendar. The Russian Empire used Julian calendar until the revolution in 1917, or maybe even slightly later. That's January 7th. Uh, that was February 7th, according to the old style and January 21, according to the new style. Yeah, uh, there were some discrepancies, but I think uh, this is the one. Even way later in the list, but her uh, listed it differently. But I think this is the most probable combination of those two. Yes, that's why, that's why you have two day dates, because you have by two different calendars. So real school, uh, was a high school that first of all was more oriented towards mathematics and natural sciences uh, uh, rather than classical uh, languages and history. But the problem was this didn't give you the full rights to enter the university. You had to pass maturity exam, so-called school leaving exam, the final exam that certified that you can start university studies. So real schools didn't have those rights. So Butter had to take his uh, exam in a classical gymnasium somewhere else. And he did so in Wamsha, I mentioned this name when uh, I think the map. Uh, in, uh, 19, it happened 19, uh, sorry, 1893, and he enrolled in the Division of Mathematics and Physics of the Imperial University of Warsaw. He attended lectures in mathematics, astronomy, physics, and chemistry. And that didn't last long because in 1894, he was expelled from the university. There was a Polish patriotic manifestation on April 17th of that year, in honor of Colonel Kliński, one of the uh, commanders and leaders of the uprising against Russia 100 years before. And of course, that didn't uh, fly well with the authorities. They arrested whomever uh, they can. And, well, we don't know for sure whether Bertram was arrested, but many people were. Uh, and well, there is a gap in his vita that might as well account for him not being uh, able to do anything. There's a seal of the Russian University in Warsaw. There's a statue of Colonel Kielinski, uh, whose honor the manifestation was. Well, of course, he didn't have a statue back then. 
Well, uh, in uh, 1895, he had to move to Lviv, uh, Lvov, as it was known. Then, in the, the Austro-Hungarian partition, it was already Austro-Hungarian. Uh, the situation was totally different under Austro-Hungarian rules because in starting 1861, Austrians became nicer to their ethnic minorities. They allowed more autonomy, uh, more national languages. So they didn't want uh, such a thing that happened in 1848 with Hungarians. So they, and uh, plus they needed, uh, you know, soldiers for fighting Prussia and such. So they became nicer to the minorities. The province of Galicia, of which Lvov was the capital, got its autonomy in 1861. Polish was introduced as language of instruction. So the Polytechnic School was all in Polish. The capital of Eastern Galicia. But no, Krakow was just a small sleeping garrison town. I hate to say that being from Krakow, but that's the fact. The whole yes, yes, it was not Eastern, Western. No, no, no. Krakow was not the capital for a long time. Yeah, but anyhow, he didn't complete uh, the course, uh, but he passed the state exam, so it means he obtained his engineering certificate. Uh, and then he moved to Leipzig to, con to complete a course of studies in mathematics. He wrote at the university, listened to lectures in mathematics, physics, psychology. In 19, uh, sorry, 1898, he presented the dissertation, uh, Introduction to the Theory of Iterational Calculus in German, uh, and obtained a degree under the direction of Sophus Lee groups of transformation and such, one of the most important mathematicians of the 19th century. There is some famous mathematician involved in analytic function. Josef Puzina, oh. he will appear later. Yes, yes. Uh, he was a student of Weierstrass. He had some... Uh, you mean Puzina? Yes, Josef Puzina. Uh, from the, the priestly family, going back to Rurik. Uh, uh, Josef Puzynak, his brother was a cardinal in Krakow, very, very aristocratic family. Anyway, Puzyna will make his appearance later. Now, I should probably rotate it, or you bear with me. That's the enrollment card of Bethard. He enrolled uh, in uh, 1897. And after three semesters, he was done with his PhD thesis, lo and behold. This is the report of the first PhD exam. You can see Sophus Lee's signature. That comes from the archives of uh, University of Leipzig, thanks to Stanisław Doboracki, who found it. Uh, well, the topic that Peter chose himself was to study iteration, but he put before himself a too ambitious goal. He wanted to study iterations of uh, maps of the Riemann sphere in terms of framework of V groups. Well, that is already, let's say, very difficult thing because if you have a map, an iterated map, you cannot always, there are so many obstacles in some cases you can, in some cases you cannot uh, represent such a map as a type one map of a flow. If you ever studied parabolic germs, you know how notoriously difficult it is. Topological classification, uh, it's still okay. Uh, Camacho and Sad from people from uh, Brazil know those names and their uh, achievements. Uh, but analytic classification is a very difficult thing. I'm, only vaguely familiar, so I'm not going to present any details. Uh, there is a uh, uh, modulus. There is an invariant that tells you whether two germs can or cannot be analytically conjugated. Anyhow. So, of course, he couldn't uh, make too much advance, giving himself 
such an ambitious goal, so his professors took it against him. But Lee was defending him, even though he said that, well, the author has definitely made it. I cannot recognize that the author has definitely managed to substantiate significant new result. Despite all of this, his consideration, which testifies to diligence and talent, have their value. So Lee was defending him against his faculty colleagues who didn't like the fact that but he didn't make any significant advances in whatever he needed to study. So the grade was magna cum laude to A. Well, with this diploma, he returned to Lwów, took a position at Lwów Polytechnics, but he also wanted to be involved with Lwów University, submitted a request for habilitation, which is the right to lecture by them rather than a super PhD. This was denied. Uh, he got his habilitation at the Lwów Polytechnic School. He wanted to, uh, it to be also recognized at the university, but again, no success. Uh, he taught mathematics for engineers, but uh, not just any routine mathematics. Sometimes he lectured on difference equations, graphical methods of solving equations, so it was pretty ambitious. He published uh, lecture notes, uh, uh, textbooks, uh, uh, notes on mathematical education, logic and mechanics, uh, popularization pieces, expository pieces, for example, on the uh, Newton polygon and the uh, high school textbooks. I might comment later on that. Then he made two more attempts uh, uh, to obtain habilitation and again, no success. What is also interesting around 1915, he developed an interest in spiritualism. And there is also, let's say a possible connection here with some figures from Warsaw, but I'm not going to go into that. If you ask me, I might be more, uh, let's say. He retired in 1937 and died two years later. Well, that's part of uh, Lvov or Lviv Polytechnics. Very bad quality from my PDF, but that's the top of the main building. All these sculptures. Uh, that's his registry card. He's, you know, as an employee, he had to fill in his data, and uh, these are his data address and uh, citizenship and degrees and. Uh, you know, marital status, whatnot. So what is this citizenship? Uh, citizenship. Obywatelstwo uh, Polskie, Narodowość Polska. This might have been already in the uh, Free Poland after 1918 then, because there was no Poland before that. Which place is this? Lwów or Lviv, if you prefer. Lviv Polytechnics. Tata Pracownicza. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, so that's an interesting detail. Yeah, it's not that you asked. Uh, I didn't have the date for this, but Narodowość Polska, Polish nationality, Polish citizenship indicates that this might have been after 1918. Okay, so these are his applications for habilitation. Uh, his own whatever he submitted here. Written in Polish. E yes, Polish was the official language. It's 1901, still the Austrian rule, but it's already autonomy. Polish is the official language, so even the official, let's say, documents are issued in Polish. All the applications, all the answers. And so, so that's a cover letter that you... Uh, that's a cover letter, yes, that's a cover letter. And here he says what kind of uh, publications he submits to be considered for, for this. So it's maybe it's good that you asked. Principles of Iteration of Calculus, a work about uh, functional 
the therapy dots, like drawing skills, but with different operators instead. Uh, these were the two, I think. I don't see anything else. And uh, 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 maybe CD was later, his diploma. Yes, curriculum vitae, yes. Yeah, I cannot see it very well, bro. Here, uh, and the syllabus of his lectures uh, that he gave at the Polytechnics, and also the diploma, which was certified, nostrified, as they say. Okay, here goes Puzida. Dr. Josef Puzida, he was the chair of the committee because he was uh, he was the main professor of the mathematics. Another famous name is Marian Smoluchowski, statistical physicist, who was there in Lwów as a professor. Uh, Jan Rajewski was a mathematician. Uh, these, I think, are people from... Uh, let's say, Yes, yes, but he was uh, already famous. He was already famous. So, so this was the committee. No, he became rector of Bangalore University, but he didn't even start being the rector. He died of dysentery. Uh, uh, okay. I don't know. What's some disease? He just... Yeah, of dysentery. Was 1917 in... during World War One. Yeah. Times of during during 1917. There was dysentery. They brought him to let's say boost the Department of Physics in Krakow, but he didn't get his chance. <laughs> Yes, that's that's a small yeah. that, that, That's small Yes. Anyhow, anyhow, this committee said no. Uh, so uh, we already read uh, from the handwriting what uh, documents, what uh, publications he submitted. Uh, as I said. The second one uh, was not related to holomorphic dynamics, and the first one was just. What's up? I said that these papers are quite short. Yes. Uh, yes. The first one is. Uh, uh, the first one was just. Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, he made bad choices here. That's a good question and good observation, actually. The first uh, thing is just like a survey from what he really did. So it's shorter than it should be. And the other thing was not related to holomorphic dynamics. Okay, I put on the... So the results were correct, but insufficient. No habilitation. In 1918, he put his 1903-1904 paper from Kazan, which was in Russian. And I don't know if anybody on the committee could read Russian. As I asked people, Smoluchowski even had troubles lecturing in Polish because he was brought up and educated in Vienna. German, his German was better than his Polish. He made some funny mistakes when lecturing in Polish. <laughs> uh, so. I'm not sure if he or Kuzina or Rajevsky could read Russian. So, but anyway, they didn't like it. He didn't, ah, you can read some opinions. Despite great verb and determination, this is my translation from Polish. Dr. Becker works do not yield any positive scientific results. There are many formal manipulations and computations in them. Essential difficulties are usually dismissed with a few words, without deeper treatment. The content and characters diverge significantly from modern research. Uh, that was true. What can I say? Or almost true. Uh, speaking about diverging significantly from modern research, this is from 1918, this, this attempt on 1919, okay, and 
In 1908, Václav Sierpiński was brought by Puzyna for the second chair of mathematics. And uh, in turn, he, uh, let's say, raised Stefan Mazurkiewicz, also Zygmunt Janiszewski appeared there. Warsaw School of Mathematics started in Lwów before World War I. Uh, the three pillars of what became Warsaw School of Mathematics got their, let's say, career start. Sierpiński was a little bit more senior. He was the leader, but Janiszewski and Mazurkiewicz were so also. Uh, Sierpiński became a professor in 1908. And here you have set theory, you have Sierpiński curve, you have all this modern mathematics. And here you have just uh, papers which were not even written in the style of theorem proof, theorem proof. And all this vague narrative, all these ideas that have to be guessed what the author had to say, very few proofs and many mistakes along the way. So really the content, the character diverges significantly from modern research. They knew what modern research was because it was represented already. In the proof. So, there's more, let's say, juicy language in here. Oh. Illegitimate oh, conclusion. These are transformations of one problem to another, no less visible. Yeah, it, that's what he wanted to define, but well, that's not so easy. Uh, my earlier remark about Lee groups, that was the about iterations that arbitrary exponent. Uh, I think my uh, opinion uh, oh, Pusina, Pusina died in 1918. So that was not Pusina probably, but uh, Sierpiski wasn't there anymore. In 1918, he was still in Russia as a, let's say, enemy alien. Uh, he came back to Warsaw in 19, uh, 1919 or so. I don't remember uh, this part. Anyhow, so as I said, they weren't, their opinion was not so unjustified. Better work against himself and, uh, well, submitting a paper uh, with in the language that the committee cannot read is probably not a good idea when you apply for anything. Uh, so his main uh, works is the doctoral dissertation and the paper in Polish, especially the first two parts, because third one is just a recapitulation of some other people did. Uh, these are the bibliographic data. So what's there? In the doctoral dissertation, well, he wasn't always the first to do it, but all this combination of things and ideas that you will see, well, he studied individual orbits rather than functional equations and behavior of their solutions. He did that, but in other publications, not in the PhD thesis. So he studied individual orbits, the convergence of orbits, the partition of the sphere according to convergence or non-convergence of orbits. Uh, I think uh, he didn't think about uh, pointwise versus uniform convergence for him it was pointwise, but anyhow, regions of convergence, the boundaries of regions of convergence, here go for the asset, Indication of the method of determining of the boundaries of region convergence using backward iteration, not the one that I showed in the picture, not the one with the level set, but if you work with holomorphic dynamics, you take a non-exceptional point, you iterate backwards, and the pre-emissions accumulate on Julia set. So this is already as an idea with that here. It, there is this example, one example of every chaotic, everywhere chaotic map. There is a classification of periodic point by the magnitude of the derivative. Greater, less, or equal to one, different behavior. The modulus of the derivative 
thus that wild is associated with the region of convergence. There you, there you go. Some observation about pre-periodic points. Nowadays, these are studied in the connection with parameter spaces, Michurevich points, for example, and also in arithmetic dynamics, uh, very much so. Better uh, wasn't the first one. Uh, the pre-periodic points appear already in Kazimierz Żuławski's work. But Żuławski didn't work much on iteration. He had two good works, but then he did something else. Uh, Better knew about Żuławski's work, and he actually spoke about Żuławski's points, <laughs> his papers. Uh, and by this, he meant pre-periodic points, uh, the points who, whose images. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, uh, in the Polish paper that uh, I also mentioned, there are more things of this sort. He correctly found uh, the Julia set or the boundary curve. Well, the notion of the curve was still a little bit vague back then, but uh, he called it boundary curves. We, we now know that might not have a curve at all, but ten percent or something. Uh, well, for a monomial and for the Chebyshev polynomial. That was in my mathematical talk, so I am not going to uh, repeat myself. Chebyshev polynomial in degree two and three, that's what he did. How he did it, how he knew that this is the real interval, he didn't tell us. But he said, this is the boundary curve for this and that polynomial. And, hey, this is correct. Well, density of periodic points in the boundary curves Mention of irrationally neutral periodic points, something that we now know as Fatushi Shikure inequality, the formulation of an exact upper bound for the number of periodic regions of convergence in, the, in terms of the critical of the number of critical points. He had that. It took a while uh, for people to, to prove it, but of course they didn't know that. Uh, uh, it was postulated by Becker in 1898 back then. That, that is amazing. Uh, well, so we know that all these topics reemerged, uh, and a few more that maybe are of lesser importance uh, that I skipped. So, Becker works was kind of forgotten. After 1980, there was a big boost to uh, work in holomorphic dynamics, thanks to the normal families introduced by Paul Montel. So Fatou, Julia, and Rich uh, had very convenient tool with which to study those families. Uh, Fatou gave credit to Betfair for his theorem, uh, uh, near the super attracting fixed point, mm -hmm. but he didn't reference any of Better's publication, neither the Polish nor the Russian paper. Reed cited the paper from 1904 and filled in the details of Better's proof, one of uh, those that appear in this paper. Here are bibliographic data of Fatou and Reed. So, with all these ideas being present in Better's work, I would say that uh, even though it was deeply flawed, he should be regarded as one of the founders of holomorphic dynamics. And a little bit of uh, what happened after 1918 with better, let's say, uh, uh, deeply involved in all the spiritism to the point that in 1937, the uh, spiritual, the Society of Spiritualists uh, uh, published a death notice uh, for him uh, uh, in memoriam in Gazeta Kowska. So he was deeply involved with those occultist things until the very end, but not only. Well, his last mathematical publication was in 1914, but he did some uh, uh, talks in the Polish Mathematical Society 
He said 1919, but in Lvov it started in 1917, and all these uh, regional mathematical societies were combined uh, with, uh, together to form Polish Mathematical Society in 1919. Published two papers on philosophical issues in foundations of mathematics in Przegląd Filozoficzny on the principle of contradiction, on Russell's antinomy, and philosophers uh, were quoting it. I have the, the uh, let's say, an edition of Tatakiewicz's History of Philosophy, I think from 1970s, 1980s, he still cites better article on the uh, Russell's antinomy in the bibliography. So these were read. Uh, but somehow he missed uh, all these developments that were happening in the, the area that he worked on. So he didn't know what Fatou and Julia and Reed were doing, even though he was still alive, he was still working uh, at the polytechnics, giving lectures, and having all these, uh, let's say, organizational activities. Uh, and this is uh, kind of uh, nice that Monte's results were known to Polish mathematicians. Between uh, how do you know that he didn't know? He, he, he might have known and not cared or something. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Choice of language. Uh, so you don't have any problem. We don't have any evidence that that he knew or that he cared, yes. Uh, one uh, former PhD student of Montel was professor in Poznan, that was Mieczysław Biernacki. And also there are very nice uh, arguments in the works of Franciszek Leia from 1930s. This is not holomorphic dynamics. This is work on Chebyshev polynomials. Uh, the complex play, very nice arguments using normal families. I learned a lot from those. Normal families. So Monte was visiting Poland. He gave a talk uh, uh, in the Krakow branch of the Polish Mathematical Society, published a paper in 1936 in Andar de la Societe Polonaise de Mathematique. Uh, uh, yes and no, but that's another story. Yes, that's the one that you keep under the wraps in the, uh, in the you know, digital uh, repositories. When I work with Marta Kosek on the history of Anna de la Societe Polonaise de Mathematique and Andales Polonici Mathematici, I had to ask the permission to access the volumes. <laughs> Anyhow, just, just an idea so that you would think of making the digital resources more available to researchers. And that's, uh, I should also credit Stanislav Domorowski, who got me started on research with Beth here. And we wrote a bit of things uh, here. The materials are from Leipzig and Lviv uh, archives. Pictures are whatever I could legally download from the internet. Thank you very much. So maybe I have one question also regarding the journals. So you mentioned that these Polish papers published they were in Pratsa Mathematical Physician. That's right. Tell us something about it. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I can tell you about the journals that Befer was publishing. Uh, altogether, he had 20 or 21, I don't remember right now on top of my head, mathematical publications, most of, it, most of them in Polish journals. Prace matematyczno fizyczne were started by Władysław Natanson, another personality from Warsaw, a physicist. Uh, he was later uh, active in Krakow from the assimilated Jewish family. He started it, I think, with his brother Edward. I'm not sure what Edward's profession was, but they wanted a journal. Uh, uh, and uh, means what? Works, 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 mathematical and physical works. Was it at the University of Warsaw or was the work? They, they founded it privately. Okay. Yeah, the Nathans and Brothers. Uh, good question. I should have checked that I didn't. I even don't know how long it was uh, 
published. Another journal in which Bertrand published was Wiadomości Matematyczne, started by Samuel Dickstein, also privately financed by Dickstein himself. Maybe he got some, uh, let's say, financing, uh, but not the full one from here and there. But that was uh, one man's enterprise. The expository pieces on iteration and the one on the Newton's uh, the polygon that was Wiadomości Matematyczne. The future exists. Uh, they still exist, but it's, you know, another iteration. Let's put it this way. Why would anybody publish a mathematical journal on their own? Um, no, uh, because uh, they couldn't do it officially. I mean, imagine Russian authorities that even didn't allow the instruction in Polish uh, uh, to publish an official university journal in Polish. No way. Yeah, so if if it could be done, it could be only done through the efforts and uh, uh, resources of private people. I'm not sure if this answer satisfies you, but uh, uh, you Google up what is what not so you'll know more. And Bocher, Bocher uh, published the papers in, in Polish because he wanted to make a point of publishing in Polish? Yes. Yes, yes, very, very good opening for my next comment. Yes, he made a point. Well, uh, uh, he also published in Russian, but that's, yeah, on one hand, uh, he had every reason to avoid publishing in Russian uh, because of uh, you know, all this bad experience with uh, uh, being educated but in, uh, in Russian only and being kicked out of the university for the patriotic manifestation without the right to enroll anywhere else in the Russian Empire because that's what it entailed. And in 1904, he publishes in Russian. And uh, well, we dig a little bit uh, deeper, and that was uh, well, he had some contacts with Kazan Mathematical Society, he was a member. I don't think he could travel, but his talks were list, uh, listed in there. So I guess he was just sending things by, by mail and they were reading them or publishing them. He wasn't giving talks online. Uh, I think he would if they, if they had this way of communication. But Kazan was specific because they were awarding a very prestigious prize in geometry. Sophos Lee was the first laureate of that. So I think he wanted to, let's say, to get a foot in the door, so to speak, and to be on the good side of the uh, Russian colleagues. And one of the visitors of Lee about that same time was uh, Dmitry Sintsov from Kazan. So uh, there's a possible contact, but we don't have much evidence and now this is not the time for Polish scholars to do anything uh, in Russian archives, of course. Uh, uh, on the other hand, I mentioned textbooks. He wrote textbooks for in Polish, for Polish high schools, according to the curriculum that was uh, uh, in, uh, that was in uh, force uh, under the Russian occupation, which was totally different, or maybe not totally, I was significantly different, uh, different enough, I should say, from what the high school students in Galicia were doing. It was about 1904 as well. So that was the time of a little bit more opening of the Russian authorities towards Poles, which was cut shortly by uh, Polish, uh, say, school strike and such. Poles wanted more than the Russians were willing to give them. And the Russians were courting Poles because they entered the war with Japan about that time. What year? 1904. 1904. 1905, they lost. Uh, but uh, 1904 was, uh, well, Polish representatives were allowed to be elected to the Russian parliament and such. So something uh, was uh, following in the relations between 
Russian authorities and Polish population. So uh, perhaps Berger uh, had, uh, let's say, some hopes that there would be Polish schools that can use his Polish language uh, uh, textbook. Otherwise, it was just, you know, the work of, uh, of love. I don't know if I answered your question, but. Other questions? Thank you very much. Because the thing is, that's the week of.